Hello, Beacon Heights students. I'm Mrs. Dale, and this is lesson number three. I hope you have enjoyed learning about Mozart and Haydn the past few weeks. This week, we're going to talk about another important man named Beethoven. The three of these men had something in common. They all met in Vienna, Austria. Ludwig van Beethoven, or just Beethoven, was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany. Like Mozart, he came from a musical family. At the age of four, Beethoven started lessons in violin, piano, and composition with his father. By the time he was eight years old, Beethoven was pushed into giving concerts for the public. The little fellow was kept at the piano hour after hour by his father. It is a wonder that Beethoven did not grow up to hate music. At the age of 11, Beethoven composed his first published pieces, three piano sonatas. He had become the student of Christian Gottlob Nefi, an outstanding teacher. Nefi was court musician of the Elector of Bonn. He gave Beethoven much encouragement and appointed him as his assistant organist. At the age of 14, Beethoven had progressed so well in his ability to play various instruments that he became assistant court pianist and violist in the orchestra and even got paid. Remember that a viola is simply an instrument just slightly larger than the violin, but it is deeper in tone. When Beethoven was 17, he traveled to Vienna, Austria, a great center of music in those days. There he had the opportunity to meet and play for Mozart. Mozart was impressed with Beethoven's skill of improvising on the piano. Improvising means creating and performing music without any preparation. You just do it, you just play by ear. Mozart later told his friends, this young man will leave his mark on the world. And truly, Beethoven has left his mark on the world. Beethoven's time in Vienna was cut short when he learned that his mother was very ill. They thought she had tuberculosis, and so Beethoven, being the wonderful son he was, hurried back to Bonn to be with his mother at her bedside. Shortly afterwards, his mother died, and this was very hard on Beethoven, as you can imagine. To earn money while back in Bonn, Beethoven became organist at the Bonn Cathedral played the viola in a theater orchestra, gave music lessons to children, and was still busy composing music. All in all, Beethoven wrote nine symphonies. Probably his greatest and most famous symphony is his symphony number no. five in G minor. Remember minor kind of sounds dark or a little scary? You will hear this now. At the beginning of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, it starts with a theme like this. That probably sounds familiar to you. It looks like this in the music. It's written in two for a time, and this little symbol is an eighth note rest. And then we have three eighth notes with a half note. Some of you might notice there's something interesting over the half note. This is called a fermata. Say with me that word. It's an Italian word. Fermata. It means to hold the note longer. How long we hold is at the discretion of the performer and the conductor. So let's clap this rhythm. Rest. Eighth, 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 half note, hold, rest. Eighth, 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 half note, hold. That's how it goes. Very good. So I want to play that for you. And this is the main theme. We'll hear this theme again. Here we go again. Hold. Yes, let's keep listening for just one more minute.
It's very intense, lots of energy. You can hear the brass section, the string section. It's calm for a minute. You can hear it. It's building. just a small excerpt of Beethoven's symphony. I hope all of you will take the time to listen to the full symphony number no. five. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what a symphony orchestra is. A symphony orchestra consists of families. Just like you belong to a family, there's a family in an orchestra and it consists of five sections. The first section is the string family, and the string family is made out of stringed instruments, which includes the violin, the viola, the cello, the bass, and even the harp. The second family used in symphonies is the woodwind family, which includes the flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, piccolo, and English horn. The third family is the brass family. Now most of the time, the brass family is made of brass. They're the shiny instruments in an orchestra, but not always. The brass family includes the trumpet, the trombone, French horn, and the tuba. The fourth family in the symphony orchestra is the percussion family, which includes timpani, the big kettle drums, the triangle, the celeste, bells, and anything else that kind of makes crash, crashing noises. Of course, the orchestra is led by the conductor, because as we discussed last week, the conductor is the person responsible for keeping the family together so that they all make beautiful music, and he's also responsible for creating um, a mood and keeping the energy in a symphony orchestra. In Beethoven's time, the symphony orchestra was a little smaller. It consisted of 30 to 40 players. Today, when you go to a concert, symphony orchestras around the world have over 100 players. So it's an amazing experience to ex be in the audience of a live concert. I hope we all get that opportunity soon. Now, besides Beethoven's fifth symphony, I want to talk to you about symphony number no. nine in D minor. It is the most unique symphony that Beethoven wrote because the Ninth Symphony had a chorus at the end of it. The theme of the Ninth Symphony is the brotherhood of human beings. Beethoven believed that all human beings should love and respect the rights of everyone. The hymn Ode to Joy is found in the end of the Ninth Symphony. One of the most touching stories that I've read about is Beethoven when he conducted his Ninth Symphony. He was the very first person to conduct his own symphony. At that time in his life, he was starting to go deaf. And so he was losing his hearing. He noticed it one day, and that was in 1800, but he was not completely deaf until 1820. But it was during 1800 and 1820 that he composed some of his greatest music. At the end of him conducting his Ninth Symphony, the symphony ended, and as you can imagine, the audience appl applauded loudly. But because Beethoven was deaf, he could not hear that they were even applauding for him. It was a member of the orchestra that spun him around so that he could actually see how wildly the audience appreciated his wonderful music. Beethoven died in Vienna at the age of 56 probably of liver disease. Thousands of people line the streets to pay their respects to one of the greatest composers in the classical period. In 1792, Beethoven was sent to Vienna to study with Haydn. He lived in Vienna the remainder of his life. He loved nature 
and often he took long walks with a notebook in hand so that he could jot down some melodies that came to his mind. His love of the countryside inspired him to compose his famous symphony, the Pastoral Symphony. In this symphony, one can hear birds, and they can hear a tumbling waterfall, and they can even hear a thunderstorm. So I thought with that, because Beethoven likes nature so much, let's go outside. Well, you don't have to go outside, but I'm going to go outside, and I want you to move to one of Beethoven's other famous tunes, Fur Elise, which is a piano piece. Come with me now. As you can see, I've moved outside. It's such a beautiful day, and I thought today we could just get up and move. So wherever you are, stand up, and we're going to move to Beethoven's for Elise. <laughs> you a book now. It's Beethoven from Famous Children, written by Anne Recklin. Notice how Beethoven is spelled before we begin. B-E-E-T-H-O-V-E-N, but we say Beethoven. It was unusually quiet in the hen yard as Cecily Fisher, the baker's sister, looked around suspiciously. Then the hens began to squawk in fear. Quickly, she strode across the yard and flung open the door of the hen house. Ludwig? Well, now I know who has been stealing my eggs. No, no, Miss Fisher, lied the little boy. Casper threw my handkerchief in here and I came in to get it. Ludwig van Beethoven lived with his father and mother and his two brothers, Casper and Nicola, in the baker's house at number 934 Renengas in Bonn, Germany. In 1774, he was a scruffy little four-year-old with untidy hair and dirty fingernails. 
Ludwig went to school with his brothers. He hated his lessons. He studied French, Italian, and Latin, but his marks were very poor. As for mathematics, poor Ludwig was so bad at multiplication that if he had to find the answer to three times four, he would write down four three times and then add them all together. Casper and Nicola were very good at school, but when it came to music, no one was as brilliant as Ludwig. Ludwig was so small when he began to play the clavier that he had to stand on a bench to reach the keys. He also learned the violin. His father, Johann, was a singer. He gave Ludwig his first lessons, but was very strict. Coming home late at night, Johann would drag Ludwig out of bed to practice. If Ludwig tried to play from memory, his father would become very angry. What silly rubbish are you scratching now? He would scream. Scratch from the notes, otherwise you will never be a real musician. Sometimes when his father was busy with visitors, Ludwig would creep up to the clavier and play some chords. Then Johann would lose his temper. What are you messing around here for? Go away or I'll box your ears. But even his bad-tempered father had to admit that Ludwig was making excellent progress. Soon the little boy was learning how to play the viola and the organ. Already he was a much better musician than his father. When Ludwig was seven years old, his father decided that his son should give his first concert. He had heard how, some years earlier, Leopold Mozart had taken his brilliant little boy Wolfgang on a concert tour. Ludwig shall earn money too, he said. The concert took place on March 26, 1778. All the notices said that Ludwig was only six years old. Johann had lied about his son's age so that people would begin to believe Ludwig was as ever clever as Wolfgang Mozart. Johann was making a hole in an egg. Ludwig made a face as he watched his father suck out the raw egg and then eat two prunes. He's going to sing tonight, thought Ludwig. His father always ate a raw egg and prunes before he sang. It keeps my voice fresh, he told his young son. As Ludwig grew up, he realized that almost everyone he knew worked for the Archbishop of Cologne. Life at the Archbishop's palace was very grand, as the Archbishop was an important person. He was one of the few electors who chose a new emperor when the old one died. He loved good food, hunting, and music. The elector had his own orchestra. Ludwig's grandfather had been the elector's Kapellmeister, master of the chapel, the leader of the court musicians. It was Johann's dream that one day Ludwig might become a Kapellmeister also. When Ludwig was 10 years old, Christian Gottlob Nefi became the elector's new organist. This fine musician realized that Ludwig was a genius who needed a gentle, understanding teacher who would encourage him to compose. Mr. Nevy soon declared that young Ludwig was a young genius, a most promising talent. He will certainly become another Wolfgang Mozart if he continues as he has begun. Mr. Nevy appointed Ludwig as his assistant organist. Early one morning, Ludwig was awakened by a cock crowing on the roof above his parents' roof. He woke his brother Casper. There's a cock on the roof, Casper. He looks very plump. Let's catch him. The two boys crept downstairs and into the baker's kitchen where they found a piece of bread. Standing in the yard, they tempted the cock with the piece of bread. Here, cock-a-doodle, down here, come down. The cock could not resist and flew down to snatch at the bread. Got you, the two boys cried. At dinner that night, their parents had no idea who had caught the tasty bird they enjoyed so much. Time for you to go upstairs, Mama. The boys were very excited. It was their mother's birthday and, and name day, and every year they celebrated with a concert. While Mama was resting, a special chair was placed under a canopy and decorated with leaves and flowers. By 10 o'clock, everyone was ready, and the musicians began to tune their instruments. She's coming, everyone. Be quiet. Mama came down the stairs. She looked beautiful. 
Johan led her to the special chair. The musicians began to play, and the sound of the lovely music resounded throughout the neighborhood. After the concert, they ate and drank. Then they all kicked off their shoes and danced in their stocking feet so they would not disturb any neighbors who were trying to sleep. Ludwig was sitting at the window of his bedroom overlooking the courtyard. In front of him lay the manuscript of his first important compositions. They were three sonatas for the clavier. He had worked on them for weeks, rewriting long passages until at last he was satisfied. He wrote the dedication. To the right worthy Archbishop, Elector of Cologne, my gracious sovereign, composed by Ludwig van Beethoven, age 11 years. Bring me a list of all the musicians in my orchestra. In 1784, a new elector arrived in Bonn. The Archduke Maximilian was the emperor's brother. He was a very fat man who loved good food and good music. What's this, Johann van Be Beethoven has a slight, stale voice. You say his son Ludwig is still young, but very capable, plays the organ. Does he? I shall look forward to hearing young Ludwig play. Ludwig was not scruffy anymore. Now that he was a court musician, he had to look very neat and tidy. He wore a smart frock coat, knee breeches, silk stockings, shoes with bow knots, and embroidered waistcoat with pocket flaps bound with a real gold cord. His hair was curled at the side with a pigtail at the back. He even had a sword and a silver belt that he would wear sometimes on special occasions. When Ludwig was 16, Mr. Neefe decided that he should study with Mozart in Vienna. After a long journey, Beethoven arrived on April 7, 1787. A few days later, he met Mozart, who invited him to play. Ludwig sat down at the clavier and played brilliantly, but Mozart did not seem very impressed. Good, you repaired that well, he said in a rather cool manner. I can do much better than that, cried Ludwig. Give me a melody and I will show you what I can do with it. Ludwig's fingers flew across the keyboard. He was playing for the great Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He was inspired. The simple melody that Mozart had given him because a masterpiece as both Beethoven wove it into a wonderful composition. Mozart sat enthralled. Finally, he went over to some friends who were sitting in the room. That is Ludwig van Beethoven, he said. Someday, he will give the world something to talk about. Ludwig van Beethoven became one of the world's most important composers. He wrote over 600 works, including nine symphonies, five piano concertos, one violin concerto, one opera, 32 piano sonatas, and many string quartets, trios, and choral works. Beethoven composed many of these masterpieces after he became deaf. Among his most famous pieces are the Moonlight Sonata, the Pastoral Symphony No. 6, and the Ode to Joy from his Symphony No. 9. He died in 1827. Thank you for joining me today for music. As an assignment, if you have time, I would like you to listen on, on the DVD, Beethoven Lives Upstairs. It's a fab fabulous video, and I'm sure you would enjoy watching it with your families. Until next time, take care.